Welcome back to the Mayor's Music Awards. My name is Councillor Antoinette Bramble and I'm the Deputy Mayor of Hackney and I'm so excited these awards are back. Now I know we're not in Hackney Empire yet but this is the first step. I really miss hearing you play on the instruments and those fantastic sounds that you play, your collaborations, your confidence and just the sheer joy that you give the audience. I'm wishing everybody today who's taken part in the competitions well and look forward to visiting you in your school soon. Take care. Bye bye.
Thank you to my Arthur for that wonderful rendition of the slow movement of J.S. Bach's Sonata in E minor for continuo and flute. Maya was a recipient of the Mayor's Music Award in November 2019, which was the last time we were old, able to hold the awards due to the pandemic. I'm incredibly pleased to be able to welcome you to an online award ceremony to present the Mayor's Music Awards for the academic year 2021-2022. The Mayor of Hackney's Music Awards, a fund to support aspiring young musicians and recognise the quality of music education offered in Hackney schools, returns this year with added award categories celebrating the musical learning of children with special educational needs and disabilities. The SEND Awards are named after former Hackney councillor and speaker Jeff Taylor, who passed away in 2019. He was a talented musician, singer, and ex-teacher who served Hackney Council for 16 years. Bringing back this event after the pandemic is an important step in renewing our commitment to inclusive culture, and most of all, celebrating the young talent we have in Hackney. As the concerts and performances arranged by our music service repeatedly show, Hackney is home to some amazingly gifted musicians. The MMA is an exciting opportunity to recognise and celebrate the incredible talents of these musicians and help provide much needed financial assistance to nurture their skills. Like so much of the cultural life of the borough, it's felt like we've been on hold over the past two years. But with the return of the Music Awards, Carnival and Discovering Young Hackney, we really do have the opportunity to showcase our talent. We've heard for some outstanding performances tonight at the Town Hall. And these awards will go on to celebrate and showcase those that we will be giving prizes to later. But we all know that funding lessons, instruments, and performances can be extremely costly. So we're proud to provide financial assistance for music, an important part of education and learning, to help open doors for young people who are pursuing their passion and are hopefully unlocking a lasting love of music and a possible future career and I think we'll be hearing more about that shortly. I'm delighted once again to be working in partnership with our music service on the Mayor's Music Awards, and tonight follows a busy couple of weeks for Classical Meets Jazz Diversity Group with performances at the Queen Elizabeth Hall and the Barbican. The work of the Hackney Music Service plays an important role in our arts and cultural strategy priorities for the borough. We're committed to providing access to affordable music activities for all our local children and young people and to promote music and other art forms in the school curriculum. Creativity and opportunities to be creative is an entitlement that all our young people should be able to access through and beyond school, and this must be always protected. We as a council want to continue to celebrate, encourage, and enable young people to develop their musical and artistic talents and are determined to find ways of reducing financial barriers which could prevent any young person from realising their musical ambitions. So in conjunction with our music service, I have set aside some money to recognise and assist some of our brightest talent. Previous MMA award winners have been able to provide instruments to more students so that a great number of pupils can learn to play and participate in ensemble music making. Others have been able to provide high quality inspirational workshops, concert visits and school projects to enhance their school's music curriculum. And most of all, individuals have been able to go on and achieve success in instrumental exams at higher grade levels. So I'm pleased that the MMA is supporting greater access and progression for even more pupils. We've already heard a piece played by Maya Arthur who received the award in 2019 and I'm delighted to welcome Anu Sodepi, a pupil award recipient of the very, very first Mayor's Music Awards in 2013, who will perform on the violin tonight before telling us about her musical journey.
so Anna, you brought to life uh, the Town Hall this evening for the Mayor's Music Awards. You were the very first recipient of an award back in 2013. I think at the time you were at Mossbourne Community Academy. Yeah. Um, just thank you for coming back. Mm -hmm. I know it's been uh, a difficult time and uh, I think we just really want to hear from you about your musical journey. So when the awards were set up uh, and winning that award back in 2013, what did it mean to you? Um, so at the time I didn't know it was the first one so I, um, I just realised that quite recently but I think it definitely made me feel quite special and recognised so I felt like for the first time in ever I was my talent and my passion for music was recognised in Hackney and I think that just made me a lot more confident in just doing what I want to do like just enjoying music and playing and just like studying and making sure that I improve on the violin, which is what I love to do. So it just gave me more confidence to do that. Um, yeah. What, what was it like going back to school after that with the awards? Yeah, it was weird because I saw my, like we had these screens in the corridors and stuff where they announced things or they announced any awards. And then my picture always came up with my name. So, I mean, that was cool, but it was also like, um, yeah, I, I think the same thing. It just gave me more confidence to be like, um, this is what I want to do. People are recognising this. And so I'm just going to keep doing it so that more people can, so that more other, because I was, yeah, I didn't really see other black people receiving awards in Hackney. Maybe I wasn't so open to it, but then I felt like I could pave the way kind of thing. So yeah, I felt proud and I felt happy and really confident. That's the second part. So it, it, your musical journey didn't stop there. You went on to become the leader of the Hackney Borough Youth Orchestra uh, and then on to uh, Trinity Laban Conservatoire of Musical Dance. Can you talk about so going from school to those other opportunities and what you were able to uh, do? Yeah. Um... So I felt, I, I definitely knew I was getting a lot of really good training by leading the um, HBRI Hackney Borough Youth Orchestra. Um, but I always knew that there was a lot more to music, to being a musician, um, which I wanted to learn. I don't know, like it was really cool leading the orchestra, but I knew there was more and I wanted more. So um, going on to study music was, it was great that I got into a conservatoire. I did apply for universities, but the fact that I got into Trinity was like a great opportunity for me. So I definitely wanted to go for that path instead of going to a, a university. Um, and at Trinity, I saw that, yeah, obviously the standard of music that I was used to was like, there was a lot more basically. So I was exposed like full on to that kind of, to a, a much higher standard of music. Um, and it, at first it was very intimidating. Um, I was told by a teacher that I was one of, I wasn't like the greatest, I wasn't the best technically able violinist that they um, accepted. I'm not sure if they should have told me that, but what that, that had an effect. Um, it had a positive effect on me, like long term. At first it was like kind of, I felt really discouraged, but then it meant that the only way I could go was up. That I could only improve, I could only get better. So I just focused on that, focused on the fact that I'm on my own journey, everyone's, because it can get really competitive at music colleges. It can get like, you can get into the same routine if you just go through stuff, um, go to rehearsals all the time. It can get ki kind of motionless and you can lose the passion for doing it. But I definitely didn't want to lose the passion for it. So um, I carried on just improving technically and also doing things outside of the music course that I loved about music, like composing, like arranging, like playing with friends outside of Trinity. That kept me in love with music and yeah, so, so that I didn't, I didn't get into the whole, because I knew a lot of people that by, by the end of the studies, they were kind of bored of always practicing, of always um, getting challenged to, go, to get better at their instruments and stuff. And I wanted to keep the passion alive. So um, yeah, I think that's, that's how it was for me. 
when you I never lost your love for it. well I wouldn't say I never lost it there were times that I was definitely like just at rehearsals really tired after like three hours or six hours or something and it was yeah but then I just had to keep reminding myself that okay if, if I stop this then what am I going to do this is the one thing I really love so I might as well yeah take a break one day then the next day just keep going like yeah so that's how I felt it. so I lost it at some point I wouldn't say I lost it but it, I just had to keep it going. It was it was a conscious a conscious effort to keep it going. And this is like a tough question, just based on what you were saying. Did you feel that question around representation, uh, especially in classical music, being a black woman from Hackney, did that continue to be a challenge, or has uh, how far do we still have to go to see sort of true diversification? Do you think? Um, I, okay, from Hackney, or yeah, I think we have a long way to go, really. Um, but the only way to keep to, to improve on that, I guess, is to, to keep encouraging people to keep seeing that there are so many young black girls in Hackney and other boroughs who, um, who enjoy playing the violin or who enjoy classical music, um, just young black children in general. So I think just seeing that talent and just not, just making sure that they are always groomed. Like I felt like I was really helped a lot in Hackney. I felt like my talent was um, people were there who believed in me and I think every person needs that um, whether you're black or you're from any other um, ethnic minority I think yeah that's that's quite important so yeah I do think there is still misrepresentation it's improving but there's still yeah there's still a long way to go I think that's a big plug for the music service there and what they bring to Hackney and yeah. championing talent and why they're so important um, you talked about your passion you've talked about where it's kind of taken you what does it mean to you, the music uh, and, and that creative process? Um, music. Uh, okay, so what does it mean to me? Uh, it's a very vague question, but I guess it, it's, um, it's just a means of, of expression. It's a means of expressing myself, but then also it's a means of um, hearing other people's expressions and sharing other people's experiences, wherever they've come from. So when I got to music college, I found I met people from different places and different backgrounds, um, some international students as well. And it was cool that we could use this one thing, music, to, um, to get to know more about each other. So I think it, it helps me to express myself to other people. And it also gives me a chance to hear other people's stories in a way that they might not normally tell it. Like, meeting someone and talking to them is different from hearing them play a piece, you know, that I might be playing, but they might be playing in a different way. And it also, yeah, so that just helps to, to understand people better from different places. So, yeah, I think that's what music does. It draws people together and it also helps people to express themselves. You mentioned composing some of your own pieces. Yes. What, what, what type of pieces, what's inspired that? What, tell us a little bit about that process. Sure. Um, so... I composed, I, I said, so the music I composed, I started off by arranging some Yoruba folk tunes. So I'm Yoruba, I'm from Nigeria, um, from the Yoruba tribe. And so I, there's a lot of Yoruba folk tunes that I grew up listening to or singing or knowing from, like hearing from my parents and other aunties and family members. So um, I found it quite cool, especially during lockdown to just arrange those into um, stuff for violin and piano and stuff. So I just carried on with that and started composing more melodies and stuff. So. I call it Afro-classical, and I'm trying to do a lot more with it and just bring it out there. But yeah, at the moment, that's the kind of music I'm compose. And if you want to hear more of that, where might we find you? So I'm on Instagram, um, Classic Hanu, and I'm also on Spotify. I have one tune out on Spotify at the moment um, called Jumoke. But if you just type in Classic Anu, double A N U for Anu, um, on Spotify, then you should find it. Brilliant. Yeah. I was hoping you were going to say that. I was hoping <laughs> you were going to say that. So last, last bit, we've got some aspiring musicians in the audience. They'll be watching the Music Awards. They may be thinking themselves into what you've already been through. What advice would you give them? Um, I would say just keep on doing what you love. Like, um, yeah, keep on doing what you love and inspire yourself. Be inspired. Like, don't cocoon yourself. Go to concerts. Like, um, 
talk to people in the industry already, listen to stuff on Spotify, on YouTube, be inspired, like inspire yourself, go out of your way to find the music that you love, to find things that you love and then engage with it. Um, and as much as you can, meet new people and just do your best wherever you are, like in orchestra practice, in your individual lessons with your teachers, wherever you're meeting people that are already in the industry, just do your best and they will, once they see that you're doing your best and you love what you do, they will, I mean, it's likely that they might have opportunities that you could engage with that could further your career. So be inspired, inspire yourself and just do your best wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can we have another big round of applause for it? And... So before we go on to the rest of the award ceremony, our next performance will be by Leanne Ricardo Gamma from Cardinal Pole. A previous recipient of the MMA for Musical Achievement in 2018, he will be singing A Million Dreams from the World's Greatest Showman.
Many, many, many thanks to Leanne. I think there was probably not many dry eyes, eyes in the house this evening, but I also just want to thank Ginny Strawson for accompanying uh, all the soloists this evening, and especially for that incredible uh, performance we've just witnessed. So now on to the awards. The panel was very impressed with the applications received and they would like to convey their congratulations to all those shortlisted for an award. I would also like to thank the panel for taking on the difficult task of judging tonight's applications and our eventual award winners. The, the first award of the evening is the Pupil Award for Musical Achievement in Instrumental Learning. There were three awards in this category. The panel had such difficulty in deciding between the two primary pupils that were all equally deserving of the award for their musical skill and potential, it was decided to share it. So the first pupil award goes to Rachel Alves from Daubney Primary School and Josiah Furlong from Mandeville Primary School. Congratulations. Wait one second. Should we do a handshake? Look at the camera. I think a high five. Yes. So that's Josiah and now Rachel. Congratulations. I think Rachel looks like she's just come off the world's greatest showman, actually. The second award goes to Jenny Zhu from Clapton Girls Academy. That's Ocean Senate. Thank you. Brilliant. And the final award in this category is to David Elisemi from City Academy, Hackney. David. <laughs> That's shows some favourites. And a music badge as well. And probably the smartest man in the room, I think we all say. Well done, David. So now on to the school's awards. Uh, they are split by primary school uh, and secondary. Uh, in terms of the shortlisted schools for the primary school awards, uh, they are Daubney Primary, Lauriston Primary, Rushmore Primary, and St. John the Baptist Church of England School. And the schools that are awarded within this category receive an instrument fund for ensemble development. Uh, there are two winners. Uh, the first is St. John the Baptist Church of England Primary School. Well done. Very well done. Thank you. I'll have to come and visit. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. And the second one is Daubney Primary School. Thank you. Congratulations. Cheers. Well done. So the next award goes to a school that has impressed the panel with a sheer range of musical opportunities and development for every child in the school through its curriculum and its extracurricular offer. There is a strong consideration of provision which supports children's mental health and their well-being, access to projects, performances, partnerships with external organisations, all to enhance and enrich the curriculum offer and access in school and external ensembles and singing. 
The school's focus on equity of access to music making in a variety of forms, including experimental and electronic music, opera, beatbox, and much, much more ensures that every child receives a broad musical learning experience. The Award for Excellence in Musical Education Practice goes to Rushmore Primary School. Here we are again. Hello. <laughs> Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Uh, congratulations again to Rushmore, but there were also uh, very well received shortlisted entries from Hoxton Garden Primary, Rushmore Primary, obviously, because they won, St John the Baptist, Church of England Primary School. Before we move on to the secondary awards, we have a performance from Elena Albu from Clapton Girls Academy, who will sing Both Sides Now by Joni Mitchell. Can we give her a clap?
Now, on to the secondary schools. The shortlist for the secondary schools in the Instrument Fund for Ensemble Development have been the City of Academy Hackney, Mossbourne Community Academy. And the award for Instrument Fund for Ensemble Development goes to the City of London Academy, Shoreditch Park. Good to see you again. So the next award is Excellence in Music Education Practice. The competition for this award has really challenged the panel, as all applicants were providing brilliant opportunities for school children through their music curriculum and extracurricular work. The panel had the most difficult time taking a decision on this award, as every single school is a deserving winner. The school receiving this award has an extensive range of opportunities for its pupils across the entire school. The diversity of styles and genres of music included West African drumming, samba, classical, jazz, as well as music for moving images, big bands, soul bands, choir, music technology, all to ensure a broad range of musical experience, supported too by external partners and extensive opportunities to perform in local and regional festivals and venues. Every student learns an instrument and takes part in an ensemble. And there is a variety of different routes through to a qualification, from GCSE to Rock School to BTEC, as well as grade exams. Year seven students receive three hours of music lessons a week, two hours per week in years eight and nine, and this school has established a strong relationship with its feeder primaries where they deliver weekly music workshops to years four, five, and six. Now, before we find out who won the Education Practice Award, I did just want to mention all of those other amazing shortlisted secondary schools. So we have City of London Shoreditch Park, Clapton Girls Academy, Mossbourne Community Academy, the Bridge Academy, and the City Academy, Hackney. But the winner of this award goes to the Bridge Academy. So huge congratulations to all the applicants and award winners so far. I think we'd all agree you're doing incredible work. As I mentioned at the start, we want to focus on inclusion and widening participation this evening. So I'm delighted that we've been able to add two new award categories in memory of former speaker, cabinet member, and councillor Jeff Taylor. Jeff was passionate about inclusion, young people, and music. These two new categories serve as a tribute to him and celebrate the musical achievements and potential of children with special educational needs and disabilities. I do just also want to acknowledge Liz Taylor, Jeff's widow, who's with us this evening and gave us permission to create these awards. I'm delighted that we can honour him in this way. Both the Jeff Taylor Send Awards are open to all schools to apply for to enhance and enrich the curriculum for the benefit of all children with Send, as I say, in every one of our settings. The first Jeff Taylor Send Pupil Award, though, goes to David Oyabanju from Ipwa School. Well done, David. I think I spoke too soon. I think David might be the smartest dressed man this evening. Thank you, David. Well done. And our, our second Jeff Taylor Award uh, is for special project. Uh, there were two shortlisted schools, Ipbra School and the City Academy Hackney. I would like to present the award to Ipra School. Seconds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Of course. Thanks. 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 So thank you to everyone uh, involved in organising the awards this evening, uh, to all the winners, but also those that were nominated and shortlisted for the awards. I hope we've inspired everyone involved to continue making music. It is an absolute honour to be back here in the Town Hall presenting these awards. Our celebration of Hackney's talent and music does not end in any way this evening. So I hope that we'll see many of you performing live in the summer at the Hackney Schools Music and Dance Festival, which is also back uh, this year. I'd like to thank everyone here in the council, uh, in the town hall this evening in the atria, uh, and all those that have tuned in to watch the awards ceremony. To close the proceedings will be played out by two talented young musicians, twin brothers, Yuma and Nahul, who will Com uh, who will present their original composition, Currents.
Thank <laughs> you. 